yeah, I was just going to comment on this whole fiasco the, that Luke and Paul talk have been talking about. Really, as it relates to whatever the fuck happened with Melky. The Melky radicalization question. But really, it's a bigger question of, you know, who's responsible for, quote, dangerous ideas and, and should dangerous ideas be put out there or should they, should be, people be protected against dangerous ideas? Should censorship be involved, etc.? I, I made a video about this already that Luke actually played on his show. It was uh, my criticisms of the Luke Ford show. And Paul Tuck actually watched that and commented on it. I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of in the gray area in the middle where Luke made the point if somebody sees Mike Enoch, for example, and takes those ideas to heart, they were set up to go on a dangerous path, a dangerous path to begin with. And yes, I do agree with that. But at the same time, I don't think that means I don't think that gives you carte blanche. And I'm not talking about Luke Ford specifically here. I'm just talking about society as a whole. I don't think that means we should create an environment where we let entities that want to and do radicalize people, say ISIS, say the Aryan Brotherhood, or or Nazi-affiliated groups. I, I don't think we should encourage people to watch such radicalizing materials. Because after all, if people become radicalized, well, it's on them. I mean, it, it, it is, but I don't think we should foster an environment that encourages or enables that type of radicalization to happen. I mean, I maintain every society has had censorship of some form. So that's going to continue to happen. The question is, where is the line? Where is the line drawn? You know, for example, YouTube censor, YouTube and Twitter don't allow pro-ISIS radicalization accounts to exist. And I look at ISIS as similar to, say, Adam Waffen. That would be the flip side of ISIS as far as radicalization pro-white direction. So, I think it's a question of where you draw the line and where you draw the responsibilities. And we're not going to have an environment where there's no censorship or no no terms of service on YouTube where people can just post whatever radicalization material they want. But at the same time, we there is that slippery slope of, okay, if we're removing radicalizing material that's proposing terrorist activity, then that becomes a slippery slope of where do you draw that line? You know, like is Rush Limbaugh radicalizing? Is Glenn Beck? Is, uh, is Dennis Prager radicalizing? Some people would try to draw that line that low. So I think it's a really complex question. I brought up the, the example of how Beavis and Butthead got rid of the fire fire joke because some crazy kid like, lit his house, his parents' house on fire. So, yeah, you have a show like Luke's in the past, especially, that's edgy. There's going to be some externalities from that. Which, but people have to have responsibility for their own for their own actions, and then you have to accept a certain amount of responsibility from from what might happen from that show. So I guess I'm not really having a definitive answer like either Paul or Luke. I just think it's a it's a gray area, and it depends where you draw the line. You know, I think everyone is everyone's actually in favor of censorship even if they don't admit to it. Isn't it true that on BitChute, it's a, it's a pro... 
it's where all the people who have been censored to have extreme views go. But, you know, they don't allow porn. Okay, maybe porn's not freedom of speech, but everybody has a line is what I'm trying to say. So when it comes to the milky issue, I wasn't there. So it's hard to have a, a real opinion. How many people watch hundreds of hours of activity? But the way Luke describes it, if you go through an academic book that's a little bit edgy, but plenty of people have read it, which is The Culture of Critique, or Mein Kampf, which is written by an extremist, but it's a historical book, uh, especially for somebody with a that's capable in life with a high IQ, that falls, that's their responsibility. Uh, if you're giving radicalizing material to, to someone who is marginalized, who is 12 years old or something, maybe it's a different story, but maybe Milky is marginalized in a way. He feels put upon by society despite the fact that he's a winner, really, he's objectively a winner in life. He's got a family and uh, a hot wife, as he says. And he's a college professor. Like, there's rich people that are losers in life, which sounds like a contradiction, but it, it really isn't. There's the guy who was, I don't know if he was a billionaire, but he was super loaded. The heir to the DuPont estate, but he was fucked up in the head. He's the guy who killed Dave Schultz, the wrestler. This guy was a fucking loser loner in life, despite him being a billionaire or a centimillionaire or whatever you want to call him. But he was still a fucking loser, so. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've summed up my thoughts on that. Best I can right now.